I love how the show pays homage to the characters and does them justice while doing it. For example, Johnny Lawrence didn't have the best family, he didn't have the best mentors, and he didn't have his biological father. But still, this show is sort of like his redemption arc, and I really love seeing how it progresses. Johnny had Kreese, who was a negative influence on his life, when he wanted to seek karate, and it brought him down a path of revenge, regret, and despair. On the other hand, we have Danny LaRusso, Johnny's enemy, now turned frenemy. They're very similar, believe it or not. Danny did not have a biological father with him in the beginning. He had to seek out Miyagi, who was more of a father figure than his real father was. And he showed Daniel everything, not just about karate, but also about how to live life to the fullest and learning many morals along the way. And he even showed him his hometown in Okinawa in Karate Kid 2. Between Danny and Johnny, there's a big difference when it comes to characters and personality, and we see that happen. And they initially have a bond. And we see how this bond is both broken, repaired, severed, and somewhat intact. I'll elaborate. I love it how this season sees a mix-up and a change. Since both karate dojos have formed into one giant group, now we see Johnny teaching Danny how to be stronger and more aggressive, and Danny teaches Johnny how to be more defensive and passive. And this dynamic works and they want to be in a positive relationship so their students can become better people as well as better fighters. Essentially, they made a decision to split up and switch mentors. Eagle Fang had Daniel LaRusso and Miyagi-Do had Johnny Lawrence as their mentors. And it was very conflicting. And Johnny is afraid that he's going to lose his student and that's like a little, that's one of the subplots that happened throughout the season. He's afraid that Daniel is going to take his student away from him and brainwash him, which is not the case. This results in some tension between the two characters because it is shown that we learn that Daniel is a more of a better role model in Miguel's life than Johnny is when it comes to driving, being supportive, and being there for him. In previous episodes of the show, Johnny would be Miguel's go-to person for information and just be there to spend time with each other and talk and be like friends. But LaRusso takes that away from him and Johnny feels threatened. Sort of like empty nest syndrome, if you think about it. I like that this season, Terry Silver was fleshed out to be more than what I expected him to be, which is incredible. In the beginning of the season, he's, a ri he's living in this rich, lavish mansion, playing his fine piano, and he gets approached by Kreese, and he asks if he can join Cobra Kai and make it great again. And initially, Silver declines. He says it wouldn't be the ideal thing to do since he's moved on from the days before. Kreese still somehow managed to burrow into his subconscious and bring him back to Cobra Kai. And these memories that Terry has is the reason why he went back to Cobra Kai to aid Kreese in his time of weakness. We still see Silver hesitate when it comes to inflicting violence. And Kreese brings up the same thing that we've learned before, that since Kreese saved Silver and Nam, Silver should be grateful. Kreese and Silver's dynamic has significantly changed. They are no longer in sync like they were when they were young. Before, they used to have similar goals in expanding Cobra Kai. Now, Silver's just here because of a favor. And I like it how they disagree when it comes to teaching Cobra Kai, and it's really interesting seeing how that develops. I think the best Terry Silver moment of the season was when he confronted Daniel, and this is the moment where I was like, I was so wide-eyed and just amazed, because imagine, Daniel is an adult, he's moved on, but there's a part of him that's still scarred by the events and the actions of Silver when he was training in Cobra Kai for the All Valley. Silver broke Daniel from the inside and out, made him emotionally unstable. And now that he is older and married and he has a life, seeing his tormentor come back is scary. I want to talk about bullying for a second because bullying is bad. And that's kind of common sense at this point. But what I mean is that I've been bullied before, believe it or not, just because I like some nerdy things. And I feel like this season, it shows that bullying has evolved from not f being physical, like in the early 2000s and 90s. Now it's 
more virtual, where people harass you online with comments and shame you and whatever. Essentially what Twitter is for. But I remember there were people out there who would push me, push my head into a concrete wall over a dodgeball game. And we want our team won. So he was angry. So he just shoved my head into a concrete wall. But it wasn't that bad because it wasn't a serious injury. Luckily, my head swelled, which sort of prevented any further damage from happening. But it was... A crazy moment you have like these unstable people in your environment and it's hard to get rid of them and if I was supposed to face my bullies I would be in Daniel's position I'd be defensive but you have to understand that even the most rudest aggressive people in the world have feelings and some people bully because they want to be part of this popular hierarchy of students in schools and wherever and bullying yeah sure it gets you in this popular circle but it doesn't make you feel good Think about this, like there's this new character in the show, I don't, I don't remember his name, I think his name was Payne. Yeah, he's this new kid, he goes to the school and he gets bullied. And Daniel's son just picks on him. Because you gotta think about this, people who are new to schools, they're emotionally vulnerable. And they're socially awkward for a little bit. And this can totally ruin someone's life. I mean, once you get targeted by a certain group of bullies, they don't stop. They don't stop at just one time. They do it multiple times. and. When people let their aggression and their anger get the best of them, that's when things fall apart. I feel like both Silver and Danny's actions were justified, but at the same time, Danny's older and it takes a big person to admit they're wrong. If Silver is saying that he's sorry, it's not going to fix everything. Daniel never thought that this was going to happen in all of his years that he was going to see Silver again, but he showed up and screwed him over. You see the scared look on his eyes, the cold look between them. And it's because of Silver that Daniel and Johnny get into a fight at a bar and then they have a match to see who's the better sensei. Sadly, the fight ends up in a draw. Also, in this season, I like it how the Cobra Kai and the Miyagi Eagle Fang dojo have been reversed. I'm saying that Cobra Kai used to always instigate the violence. Uh, last season, it was uh, Cobra Kai who attacked the LaRusso house. And now it is Miyagi Eagle Fang that is going and starting fights with Cobra Kai. So it's fun to see a little bit of a mix up. The season just keeps getting juicier and juicier. Like after the fight against Danny and Johnny, my favorite character, Stingray, is back, baby. Yes, and he's living it up in a lavish house, mooching off of his sister, throwing frisbees, playing music at 3 a.m. He's just being Stingray, and I love him. He's just such a lovable character. But in a shock, turn of events. Silver, he goes back to Cobra Kai, and when Stingray does this, Silver beats the crap out of him, and it's so sad. Like, I felt so much emotions when I saw that. I'm like, this guy is here because he's loyal to a cause, and he didn't know that Kreese and Silver took over. He just assumed Johnny was still there. So he went into the Cobra Kai dojo, and he got creamed by Silver so hard. <laughs> Because I know somewhere deep down in my heart. You want to be Cobra Kai? <laughs> you were the chosen one! But here's the twist. Silver, when Stingray asked for his name, Silver replied with Kreese's name. So now he framed him beating up Stingray on Kreese. But to make matters worse, at the end of the All Valley Tournament, Silver rigged it so Cobra Kai could win. Dun dun dun. I mean, it was obvious because he was rich, but it was a shocker when I heard it too. At the end of the season, Robbie and Johnny actually have a true father-son moment and reconcile and hug. And it's beautiful. It's poetic. We see, we've seen this whole season how Robbie was the sort of like the second head of Cobra Kai. And he was teaching all the students alongside Kreese and Silver. But he couldn't do what he wanted to do. He saw that the new kid he was training turned into a bully himself. He talks about his feelings with Johnny openly. And then they truly embrace each other because Johnny's been there. He's tried to run Cobra Kai himself and he's failed. And 
Robbie is in a similar position. I want to thank the writers because this is such a great show in just 10 episodes that it's amazing. At the end of the season, we see Crease and Silver chilling at a pool, drinking some expensive wine. Silver and Crease go over their weaknesses. Silver exclaims that his weakness was Crease, and the, the police show up to arrest Crease because Silver framed Crease for his assault. Silver exclaims that Crease's weakness is Johnny Lawrence, which is true if you've seen the show or know the characters. This season, Crease showed some hesitation when it came to Silver ambushing Johnny. He felt sympathetic for Johnny because he trained him. Johnny to Crease was almost like his son that he never had. And sadly, he was the wrong influence, but there's something, there's some part of Crease deep down that cared about Johnny when he was getting jumped by Silver. I don't know, I think Crease might actually have a change of heart. But too bad he gets sent to the police station over a false charge, and Silver is a free man. He is sitting and he's considering calling Mike Barnes, at least that's what I think, and many other fans have been speculating, including Cobra Kai Theory, who is also Star Wars Theory. He is a very well-renowned channel on YouTube. I recommend you go check him out if you want to look more into the Cobra Kai universe. And in a shocking twist at the very, very end, so it's, it's almost like Marvel where they keep adding post credit scenes after the other, Miguel has ran away to Mexico to find his dad. So Miguel, even though he didn't grow up with his dad, he wants to find him. Miguel has learned that his father has been sent into hiding in Mexico because he has done some illegal misconduct of some sort. When Johnny plans to track Miguel down before he gets into trouble. Miguel's mom tells Johnny that Miguel's dad does not know he is born or that he was even conceived in the first place. So that is scary. You have this vulnerable teenager going to his biological father to talk with him why he left his mother and he doesn't even know that he had a son. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Is the season going to go to Mexico in season five? We don't know. And at the very, very end, like this is like the third end credit scene of sorts, if you think about it. Daniel teams up with Chosen to take back the valley. This is what we speculated last season was going to happen, but it didn't. Or the season before that. Chosen did show up, but now he's guaranteed to going to be part of Miyagi-Do. Cobra Kai has won the All Valley. Eagle Fang has split up from Miyagi-Do, and Miguel is MIA in Mexico, <laughs> searching for his dad who doesn't even know he exists. It's just so many twists. And Silver's just let free off the hook for totally knocking out one of the best characters of the show, Stingray. What'll happen? There's so many missing loose ends that are just left open, right? This is the most climactic season I've seen. That's been my critique. It's very unique. See ya. Don't want to be uh, Let me know what you think down below.